All right, hot off the truck, literally hot. This is a stolen theft recovery Cadillac Escalade with relatively low miles, two VIN numbers. So it's got a few good and a few bad things going for it. Ultimately, the price was really cheap and I bought this to replace the Lemon Lincoln. We gotta look under the hood because it feels like it's stumbling a little bit at idle. That trans dipstick there, it's shaking quite a bit, but this engine is, is really shaky. It's missing a bit. Well, it could just be something simple like an injector or a coil pack. We'll scan it really quick and see uh, whether my auction losing streak is going to continue here or not. But I'm hoping not because I really have wanted a bigger truck for a long time. The prices are down a bit right now with the gas prices being higher. And if you look at it on a contrarian basis, I think right now is a good time to buy big trucks like this. Well, maybe not like this, but you know what I'm saying. We're going to find out in real time why that engine seems to be misfiring and why we've got a check engine light on the dashboard. If this is your first time joining us, my name is Sam Crack, and I can't help but buy cars that I've always wanted at the auction when they come up really cheap. And sometimes it works out. A lot of the time, it doesn't. Today I'm going to take you around and show you a lot of the cars we bought in recent time and the major progress we've been making on them behind the scenes. Cars like the Ferrari 360 Spider, the Porsche 911 S with the cracked cylinder head, and that Lemon Lincoln MKC that just experienced a catastrophic engine failure at under 30,000 miles. Anyway, I literally just picked this Escalade off the delivery truck, I don't know, 15 minutes ago. I drove it home a few miles and, uh, well, Everything seems to work all right. All the electronics, the air conditioning blows cold, and it's got 58,000 miles for 2015. That's relatively low mileage. It was probably about seven or eight grand less than the nearest comp at the auction, which makes it a great deal. And that's probably because of its theft recovery history. Uh, but if it's got a major engine problem, that's not good news. And we've got to figure out in real time with this code reader, what's going on. You see this car, I actually did not buy as is. I tell you, I buy a lot of these cars as is. And when they're as is, it means whatever shows up, even if it's got a catastrophic engine problem, it is yours, no questions. Well, in this case, since it wasn't as is, if there is something majorly wrong, well, I can contact the auction and they'll try and provide a resolution to the sale of this car. Either they'll maybe try and fix it for me, they'll give you a little bit of money back on it, or they'll just plain and simple take the car back. All right, right here on our code reader, it says that we have one code, just one, in the uh, engine control module. I'm crossing those fingers for a misfire here. This, I think, has a six-speed automatic. I think they updated that in the later model years. Here we go. What is it? What is it? You got to be kidding me. When you see those words, crankshaft position, camshaft position, not plausible, it's never a good time. Gotta love when you get these cars delivered via a transport truck and well, they've gotta go right back to the auction. Either way, I'm hoping for a positive outcome here. I'll get in touch with the auction next and maybe we end up keeping this thing for the long term. I really want to because the interior of this thing is mint and it's a nice truck. Man, that is a sick truck. I just can't imagine how much it costs to fill up. Yeah, I hear you, but I actually use this app and it's been a huge help. It's called Upside. And not only does it show you the cheapest local prices on gas, it also gives you cash back on top. I mean, I just used it this morning. I've arrived at the gas station and the Upside app already knows that we're here. All we have to do is hit claim. And now if you look at this right here, we're gonna have to fill up with premium. We get a little bit more back, 13 cents a gallon as opposed to 10 cents on regular. Now I'll just tap check in and start pumping. Right now I'm getting the cheapest local price on premium because of Upside. It's totally free to use and I'm gonna drop a link to it down in the description box. And that's it, we can go on our way. You don't have to go into the store, show anybody your phone because that card that we used is linked with Upside. In a few days when that payment posts, the Upside team will get notified and then they'll apply that cash back right to our account. Now in just the last few weeks of using Upside, I've earned almost 17 bucks in cash back. And the best part about this is that it is real cash that you can get straight to your bank account or PayPal. Or if you so choose, they've got really useful gift cards at places like Amazon and Walmart. And the cash back doesn't stop there. With Upside, you can earn at local grocery stores and restaurants in the same exact fashion we just did at the gas station, you are literally two taps away from earning cash back on things that you are likely already buying. Now all you have to do is hit that link in the description box. You're gonna download Upside totally free. Use my name, Sam Crack, during sign up. That's gonna get you $5 cash back on the first 10 bucks you spend. That's like a free $5 bill just to fill up your tank. So don't miss out on this. Go ahead, hit that link in the description and don't forget to tell them Sam Crack sent you. Last time we checked in on the green Ferrari 360 Spider, I told you it was running the best it ever 
ever has. And uh, well, I need to just stop giving this car positive compliments because it broke again. And right now it's in a limp mode. When I got in it the last time I drove it, it started flashing on the dashboard. Slow down, slow down. I'm pretty familiar with this problem. And it is a very simple fix, but a costly one at that. I found an alternative solution that is way less costly and will actually upgrade this car. Uh, and we're gonna do a full video on that. And let's just say we're gonna do a video on finishing this car because with that upgrade it is going to make this car much more reliable, at least for another six months or so. Have you guys figured out what's going on here? Without me even taking the, the cover off, you can see what we've got on the ground. That is the entire convertible top. And look at the car with the convertible top off. Pulling the convertible top out of this car, not too bad, a bit nerve wracking, but it was made much simpler because of our Ben Pack two post asymmetrical lift. A huge thanks to you guys for pushing me on this lift because honestly, it, I don't know how that top mechanism would have got out of the car. It has to weigh at least like three to 400 pounds. And a huge thanks to Ben Pack for connecting, getting in touch and letting me know that this will actually fit in the barn. It fits perfect and we're gonna be using it quite a bit more going forward. But right now we are focused in on the engine bay of this Ferrari. Look at the amount of room that we have on this thing with the convertible top out. And we have access to our fuel pumps, one on either side. These are a common failure on these cars. And if you just kind of look at the condition visually of that one over there, it definitely looks like there's a problem. So we're gonna just continue tearing this car apart. It'll look pretty bare when we're done, but we will replace every single wear item. We'll probably increase the value on this Ferrari, at least double what we've got into it. Uh, but then once we put that money into it to refurbish it, it'll probably only be half of what we have into it. That's how Ferrari life goes. To go along with our stolen truck, I actually bought a stolen BMW several months ago up in Detroit, Michigan at an auction and it was a true nightmare story. I bought this thing for like 10% of its original price. It's a super rare Alpina B7. This is a twin turbo seven series that has like 500 horsepower, really rare car. And I thought I was getting a great deal on it. It was as is and when a truck went to pick it up well they couldn't get it out of the lot because it wasn't running and this was an auction that only deals with running cars now the car was listed as a running car but since it was as is again didn't matter it was mine I couldn't even get it out of the auction so the auction people told me don't worry we'll resell it for you several weeks go by and I got bids for a third of what I paid for it and the auction was just telling me just take the loss it's no big deal now if I had to find a tow truck to bring that BMW from Michigan to me inoperable as the auction is now telling me it would have doubled the price of shipping and the auction was pushing me to take almost a $10,000 loss on it. So I felt like I was a bit out of options. I was talking to my friend Alex Palmieri from Legit Streetcars about this situation and he only happened to be like three, four hours away. He found a local transporter that was able to take this BMW just a few hundred miles to his shop. It was only a few hundred bucks. And what he ended up discovering on this thing was basically the exact opposite of what the auction was telling me. So when this car came to me right off the trailer, it barely ran. It was running on maybe four cylinders and all that was wrong with it was bad fuel. So I believe this was sitting at the auction for about two or three years and it had old gas. So I put a little bit of heat in the tank. We filled it back up with some 93 and the engine runs perfectly. I mean, it's got all 500 horsepower that it came with and we definitely tested that out and kind of roasted the rear tires. So you need new tires now, Sam. I'll send you the bill for that, sorry. But this thing has all of its power back and to fix it for just a few dollars on an Alpina BMW is just kind of a little crazy. Most every repair on a car like this costs many, many thousands of dollars. And then in the next one, we tackled a lot of scratches. So this car, was a vandalism car and it was keyed and the insurance company probably quoted for an entire new paint job. I mean, it was really bad, large key marks everywhere. And now at this point, I don't even think it's a, a five footer. I mean, it's like a one footer or something like that. You really have to get up close to see where the scratches are. I did this a few months ago, so I don't even know where they are. Here we go. So here's a little scratch right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let me get a little bit closer. Yeah, right there, see in the light? There was a scratcher, but this was like a gouge before. And basically we wet sanded all of these down, filled them with a little color, clear coated, wet sanded again, buffed out the entire car. And now, I mean, really you'd have to know, you'd have to have watched my video to know where they are. Uh, so we fixed a bunch of scratches. The car's a little dirty, but it had a nice one right on the hood. That's fixed. 
And then this lip on the front, this Alpina lip that is just held on the factory 750 Li bumper uh, was all scraped up and destroyed. So we did have that painted. This little part I have in an eBay box sitting in my office. We have to install that in the next video. Uh, we had these mirror caps painted as well and we ceramic coated the entire car. And yeah, it's a really, really nice looking car now. So I have a bunch of little trim items like that and a few other things on order for the next video. So the next video I'm making, will wrap up the entire car, we'll finish it all. We buffed out the headlights. So we fixed like 10 control units in the trunk that were soaked in water. So there was a bunch of water here in the battery tray and it got everywhere because the glass was busted out and it was just sitting in an auction lot. And so I got quoted $15,000 from the BMW dealership to replace all of these wet control units and we fixed it for $150 by cleaning most of them and then replacing some of them with used parts, which on average, each unit was only $50 used and most of them are dumb modules so they didn't even need to be coated in. You literally watched this car just come back to life. Like the trunk never opened. The screen inside of the car did not work. I mean, nothing worked. As you can imagine, this car is heavily dependent on its control units. And now everything kicks on no problem. It has functioning air conditioning now. So a lot went into that video, but the results were amazing. Now, something that's been a lot of fun is we are using used parts for pretty much every repair on this car. So it needed some dash vents. We got this entire piece for 50 bucks from a part out. We got this for 150 bucks. I think that was the most expensive individual part outside of the back glass. Uh, so a very budget build. I think I'll have about $2,500 into fixing the entire car. And then it's just gonna be a normal 100,000 mile clean title Alpina B7. And Sam is gonna list it, of course, on modsandmiles.com. That's where I sell all of my cars. It's a really cool and enthusiast car auction site that you guys should check out. So Sam, let me know when you've booked your ticket for the last video of just wrapping everything up. I'll even let you take most of the credit for that one. And if you don't come out, if you come out when this thing is finally ready to be sold, you're buying the pizza. So you can save yourself even more money by just simply coming now and I will provide you with the best pizza in the entire world. After seeing the progress Alex has made on that Alpina, I kind of I kind of want to back. Like I want to daily drive it, but got enough European cars over here currently daily driving that one and uh, speaking of mods and miles I think it's a perfect outlet for the Alpina I'll also be listing my C6 Corvette there that has been easily the number one car that I've gotten in my email in my DM on the comment section that uh, people have reached out to me to try and buy it and I was daily driving it up till about a month month and a half ago when we picked up the 997 here but I think it's the most appropriate place given that the car has 260,000 miles it will be live there soon when it is I'll let you know here on YouTube and over at Instagram but right now we've got to give you a big big update on the 997s this has been one of my most fun cars in recent memory not because it's a Porsche 911 and it drives pretty good but more because of the story behind it and a lot of the controversy that stirred the cliff notes version here is that I picked this car up at the auction when we got it it seemed to look pretty good. It was relatively cheap, but it did have higher mileage, around 140,000. Within about five minutes of running the car, the low coolant light jumped on the dashboard. Now, it didn't seem to miss a beat when we were driving it. It didn't overheat. It didn't have any sort of weird symptoms. No check engine lights or anything, just low coolant. We went home, we pressure tested, we looked and we looked for hours and we couldn't find a leak anywhere. And I didn't want to believe it, but coolant just doesn't disappear into thin air. The only other place it could be going was internally inside the engine. We did a block test and that purple fluid turned yellow almost instantly, confirming that we had a problem catastrophically with our engine in this Porsche, why it was probably so cheap in the first place. Now the only real Porsche certified repair for something like this is to have a complete engine rebuild or replacement. And all the options start at around 19 to $20,000. I mean, it's not cheap. And this car, like I said, has 140,000 miles on it so figuring that the engine worked as well as it did I thought we'd have some fun we bought a nine dollar bottle of block seal we followed the instructions to a T it actually took several hours to prep this car and get it ready for that and once we ran it came back the next day and, and would you believe it it stopped losing coolant it actually felt like it ran a little bit better and all of our problems that we had kind of just mysteriously went away now last time we checked in I had driven the car about 150 miles after doing the block sealer so not a lot of miles but right now I've got right under five 500 miles on this car since when we ran that block sealer what I thought we do now is we do another block test with our chemical agent to see if it's held up and quickly address 
those naysayers that say that this definitely didn't work or I staged the block tests or I, I didn't do something. I, I don't even know how you'd stage any of this, but I'll show you what I mean right now. Here's our purple block testing fluid. If you guys watch this channel, you've definitely seen this before. When it comes in contact with CO2, it turns more yellow. And that's because exhaust gases contain CO2. So if you've got a cracked block, a cracked cylinder head, or a blown head gasket between the breech, wherever it is in the engine, your exhaust gases are making it into your cooling system. This simply sniffs it out and lets you know you've definitely got a problem. This changed yellow instantly when we first tested our Porsche. But when we last tested it, there was a theory out there from some crazy guy in the comment section that said he held it on an angle in the coolant reservoir and aerated it. That's why it didn't change colors this time. And that's just nonsense. This stuff sniffs out CO2 a mile away. And here, let me show you how. You see it turning color there? You see how we're like a greenish yellow? Now we're nowhere near being airtight doing that, uh, but we breathe out CO2 and well, it reacts just fine. So this doesn't have to be pressed as far down into the overflow tank as possible. As a matter of fact, you don't want to dip it too far down deep because you don't want to contaminate the test fluid with your coolant. But anyway, nice try guy out there. This stuff finds even the most insidious head gasket leaks in my experience and well, let's go ahead and do another test quickly on the Porsche. But before we do, I don't wanna use any more of my test fluid. Let me show you, this stuff actually goes both ways. If we go and just aerate it right now and I'm gonna shut up so it doesn't take in any more of my CO2. Right there, it shifts right back to purple. Now, if you're wondering why I just showed you that, it's not because it makes a big difference. Uh, it's because I'm cheap and I don't like to waste test fluid. Currently, we have 139,235 miles. If I remember correctly, at the beginning of our test, we had 138,768. I think that was a magic number. So what is that? That's like right under 500 miles, yeah? All right, we're gonna be real careful with this. Just kind of let some of that air out at first. We'll get it as set as we can. I think it's turning even more purple at this point. There we go. I am personally in awe that I've driven this car almost 500 miles and haven't had an issue since literally putting a $9 product in its cooling system. Let me know in the comments what other sort of theories you have below as to why this stuff still doesn't work. I mean, clearly it works but it works on very specialized cases. On our Porsche, I think the fact that we have a cracked cylinder head more than a blown head gasket or a crack engine block is the reason why it works so well. If you guys wanna see, maybe we could put it under a stress test. I've thought about the idea of maybe doing a quick tune-up, taking it to a track and seeing how well it performs. Let me know what you wanna see with the Porsche 911 down in the comments section. And let's move on over to a car you guys have been asking about for a while now, a car that is so close to being finished. Here, let's go check it out. When I look at this thing, I feel like Ed Bassmaster. I wanna say, would you just look at this? Would you just, Look at this. Would you just, I mean, I'm, I'm loving the way this is turning out. I don't even want to show you the interior because it looks completely different. Uh, this is the cheapest Coyote Mustang that sold at auction in recent memory, around seven grand with a six speed manual. I was missing two of those six speeds, but anyway, we've got all that sorted mechanically. This has completely been repainted by my friend Zach over at Ultimate Rebuilds. And very soon we're going to do a final update on this car because it is running, it is driving, and it's just a few little cosmetic trim pieces away from being finished. And how long has it been since we've seen the Audi R8? This is hands down my favorite car, but I'm currently experiencing one of my least favorite issues uh, with it. It is completely inoperable. I got in it the other day, like uh, just a few weeks ago. I went to drive it. I sat down, put my foot on the clutch because that's what you do to start a manual transmission car. And the clutch pedal stuck to the floor now. I also noticed that the brake light was on the dashboard. Usually you'd think that your brake light means that your parking brake is up and that's what the parking brake light is for, but there's a different brake light and that is for the brake fluid. I went and I 
disassembled. You can see pieces everywhere over here because you have to take the entire cowl off to get to the brake fluid reservoir. And this was low. So just looking around in the interior of the car, around the clutch pedal and under the hood where the uh, master cylinder sits, everything looks clean, everything is dry. So it can only probably be that our slave cylinder, our throw out bearing, which is located in the transmission housing has failed. They are known to develop leaks. And uh, once the leak gets bad enough, it'd be like if you unhooked a brake line, it simply will go to the floor like we are experiencing here. You can't even pump this clutch a few times. I tried, uh, it's gone. Now there's no visible leak on the floor, but that's probably because just a splash shield has collected that little bit of brake fluid that we've lost. And as I'm recording this, I'm looking at my Ferrari 612, which I recall also has a leaky throwout bearing. So we might be doing two for the price of four here. So it's not one of the things I'm particularly looking forward to, but we have a full transmission out and clutch job on the Audi R8 do. Uh, and it's a very expensive clutch at around $3,000. Since it's an R8, Audi's got it priced like a Ferrari. But as you might have seen from our Aston Martin build, we found alternatives to really expensive clutches. I just really want to retain the factory drivability to this Audi R8. I love this car. Like I said, it is my favorite and it means a lot to me. So whatever it takes, we'll get it done. But let me know in the comment section if this is one of those videos you'd like to see or maybe we just do it in the background because it's not a car we're particularly working on right now. And if you have any experience with a 6 b manual car like this Audi and an aftermarket clutch, say like a Kevlar or ceramic clutch. If you have any feedback on how it works on the R8, let me know know down in the comments I greatly appreciate it look at what we've got back fresh out the dealer service center the lemon Lincoln MKC and there's two full pages of parts and labor that had to been performed on this car all under warranty check this out we actually have coolant in the tank now well, it doesn't look any different. This is a brand new updated long block assembly and it only took the dealership about a week to order and then install the thing. I mean, it was really painless. I'm just kind of wondering, is this car worth more now that it has a replace engine in it or does it have that stigma in it that it needed an engine after just 30,000 miles? So it's always gonna be a problematic car and it's gonna make it harder to sell. Now, the replacement engine, again, should have this revised design. And if all the original engines that came in this car were destined to fail from the start, then obviously we're better off. But supposedly the engines that they replace in these cars are remanufactured. And I'm trying to understand how they're remanufactured that that implies that they took an old engine rebuilt it and stuck it in this car and the old engines had a failed block design from the get-go so uh, maybe they're just reusing like the cylinder heads and some other portions from it but they're not using the main block either way lincoln service has been really good to us like i said it only took about a week to get this car back which i thought was really incredible if you look online there's a lot of horror stories where people were out their cars like two to three months as you saw from the escalate i'll probably be selling this car fairly soon uh, just because i want something larger something with a little bit more utility and space and uh well the prices seem to be trending downward on those trucks they're about five six years old and have big b8 engines in them so if you guys enjoyed this garage update be sure to give the video a like also if you're not following me on Facebook or Instagram where I'm providing a lot of other videos and behind the scenes updates before anything goes live here on YouTube. Go ahead and follow me or just click those links down in the description box. I want to thank each and every one of you for watching today and I'll catch you very soon.